So Huawei has found a creative way of getting around the Android ban regarding their new releases. They didn't have much to say at IFA 2019. They couldn't really put out a new product, even though they're planning still in September to put out the new Mate series. They found a temporary way to release a new-ish product without any Android restrictions because it's not really a new product. It's just a new iteration of an old product. So it's the P30 Pro, and they decided to kind of semi-sorta update it with two new colors. The, and, and it's a, new, a slightly new design as well in the way that those colors are implemented. So you have like this kind of greenish one and then this more rose-looking device, but they, they split it. They put some contrast on the back by having one section uh, have this like brushed kind of dull or matte look to it, and then the other portion have a mirror finish that so many smartphones uh, seem to be embracing at this point in time. And you know how this goes. Everybody, all these smartphone manufacturers are are launching devices at this crazy pace. And you can't, as a competitor, you can't sit back and wait for resolution in, in regards to the, the ban and the various restrictions relating to how you can interact with Android and other manufacturers in the space that provide you with components and licenses and all this. You you need to do something in the meantime to keep your name circulating, at least from a, for, for, the per, for the perception, uh, for, for the aspect of uh, making it seem like you're still in the game, like you're still out there taking part. So that's that's what I think is going on with this particular re-release. Now, maybe it was planned regardless. Maybe they were like, look, it's a halfway update. But, I mean, we can look into it or not. Nonetheless, they're here. They exist. And Huawei gets a little bit of press out of this trade show where they may or may not have had other announcements planned. So this uh, P30 Pro comes in this two-tone finish in blue or lavender officially those are the colors it's going to have android 10 pre-installed which is kind of a way for huawei to launch a new device with uh, with google's latest android operating system see that's the other piece is that if they put out new hardware they can't go and currently get the software they need it's this is what makes the mate launch that's upcoming and it's going to take place in september as well so interesting if you can't like, it, is it going to launch with or without Android? If it, if uh, I mean, it's going to launch probably with Android, but is it going to launch with or without the Play Store? And if so, what does the Huawei equivalent look like on that particular device? Otherwise, this new-ish P30 Pro is going to be identical to the pre-existing one. It's going to have all the key features, the camera and so forth, the uh, the Kirin chip. It's just a it's just a slightly spruced up P30 Pro but it gets Huawei's name back in the mouths of people like me and back into the press cycle at shows like IFA 2019. It showcases the difficulty in continuing to participate in this sophisticated ecosystem with these restrictions existing on your company. Uh, don't be fooled. It's not a new P30 Pro. It's just a couple new colors. Uh, next up, Sticking with Huawei for a second, this one a bit more interesting and obviously far less reliant on other manufacturers and relationships, places like Google, <laughs> um, restrictions in place via Donald Trump and so forth. Uh, Huawei was able to, to launch a new version of their AirPod clones, uh, 9 to 5 Mac referencing, calling them clones. They obviously look like clones. They're not clones in the sense that they're not, there's no chip in there so that they can link up with your iPhone or anything like that. They're designed and targeted at Android users, and they actually look pretty interesting. I mean, obviously, AirPods are wildly successful as far as tech products go. You see them everywhere, and there is no exact Android equivalent. And so Huawei went ahead and developed their product, taking a hefty inspiration, of course, from Apple's product, in their original version of FreeBuds, it was what well, that's what they're calling their AirPods are called FreeBuds. What is the free part? I don't know. I guess you're free. 
you're free to move about with no cable. Maybe it's also free in the sense that you can use it with, with whichever device you choose. I'm not really sure. Uh, but this new version goes a step further because Huawei was able to actually put a slim degree, but but a certain amount of active noise cancellation into these earbuds. And that's interesting because that's a very difficult thing to do in a form factor like this. Apple hasn't been able to do it yet. And so far, the smallest version of active noise cancellation that I've seen is in Sony's latest product. And that's a lot larger still than AirPods or these free buds. So Huawei is actually kind of out in front of Apple now in what Apple's currently offering in the form of AirPods, AirPods 2. The rumor is that Apple is currently working on their noise canceling version of AirPods to improve the performance of the pre-existing model. And that's probably going to be in their next generation. Now, these ones are only capable of 15 decibel ambient noise reduction. So it's not going to be on the same level as like an over-ear headphone that happens to have noise cancellation baked in. But it's going to improve the these. These style of, of earbuds, one of the drawbacks is you can still hear your surroundings. I talked about this in, in many videos. We've tested it on the show. There's uh, some sound bleed associated with the fact that they just don't fit deeply in your ear. They are not an ear canal headphone, earbud. Instead, they kind of sit just on the outside of the ear, and therefore you can hear your surroundings. So this active noise canceling, makes them more suitable for noisy environments, places like airplanes, and so on. And so so I think it's only a matter of time before Apple introduces this feature to their product. But in the meantime, you could pick these up and get it today in a product that's very similar. You probably wouldn't do that if you had an Apple device, but if you were thinking about it on an Android device, you may consider this. Now, there's some other features here that are that exist on on this product that are not on airpods uh, the freebuds 3 boast four hours of battery life an additional 20 hours with the case and huawei claims that the freebuds charge 100 percent faster than airpods 2 or 50 percent faster if they're charged wirelessly so that of course is the wired charge versus the wireless charge they're saying it's faster for both and uh, so and, and substantially faster on the wire they also say bone conduction technology can tell when you're speaking combined with a refreshed microphone duct can block out wind noise, allowing you to have a, a better conversation. Even if you're traveling 20 kilometers an hour, I don't know, what are you on a bike? Are you on a, a moped? Are you on a scooter? Are you running? Do you run 20 kilometers an hour? That's Jack. Oh my goodness gracious. Where's Will? What did you do with him? I heard he's camping. You know what? He had to, he's a stressed out guy. It's tough sitting in that chair, as you can probably tell right now. And uh, I think he needed it. A break. Mm -hmm. Some camping, some nature. He's got two dogs now, so. Uh, got to do something with those dogs. Gotta let them run about. Got to get them up north. So he's probably watching this. What's up, Will? Don't worry. Jack's got your chair. He's doing just fine. Uh, one more thing. You can order these from Huawei in either black or white. That's another thing Apple doesn't let you do yet. Maybe they will in the future, but there it is. They are the new free buds from Huawei aiming directly, squarely at your AirPods. More news coming out of IFA, the gadget event happening in Europe, of course. Not there this year, but I can follow up and keep you in the loop with what's happening. Sony has launched a new device, a new Xperia 5, which is a smaller version of last year's Xperia 1, which I featured on the channel and actually found to be interesting, mostly because of the unusual form factor. 21 by 9 aspect ratio, very wide, slender, an emphasis on single-handed grip. I thought it was an interesting thing to exist in 2019. Also, they weren't concerned as much about the screen-to-body ratio wars that are going on, so they had a bit of a bezel on that device, uh, no notch or anything like that, and it had a really beautiful display. In fact, the Xperia 1 had a 4K display, which was, like, very rare to find on a smartphone and incredibly beautiful to look at. It was also expensive, though, around 900 bucks. It looks like this one's 
going to be in the similar in a similar price point, but they shrunk it down a little bit. And it's also not 4K, this Xperia 5. This is going to be a 6.1-inch display. And apparently, from, from what I'm reading from some of the hands-on and so forth, it's a little comfier in the hand because it shrunk a touch from 6.5 to 6.1. And, of course, this is going to be useful for one-handed functionality, which is a thing that is increasingly uh, difficult, a, a, a difficult feature to have on these recent smartphones. I'm using the new Note, the new plus size, the big Note, the proper Note, and there's plenty of times where I'm wishing I had something I could use with one hand, depending on what I'm doing, and it's just a, it's just one of those trade-offs. You got to make a choice, essentially, between one-handed convenience and a giant screen for everything else, media consumption and so forth. So this new device starts shipping in October. It's going to be available in a few different colors, black, white, blue, and also magenta. Interesting feature with this phone, you're going to be able to connect uh, a DualShock 4 wireless controller, a PlayStation controller, directly to the phone. And of course, that's going to open up some uh, unusual gaming experiences as far as a phone's concerned. People are very familiar with the PlayStation controller. It's a, it's a comfortable place to be. And so Sony is suggesting, like, hey, you want to you wanna boot up Fortnite on the mobile app on Android? Uh, use the PlayStation controller and have a much better experience. So that's going to be supportive, supported natively. And uh, I could see that being interesting for some people. Sony has these weird kind of opportunities to combine products like that because they, they are in all these various segments and sectors and it's becoming increasingly difficult to differentiate yourself in the smartphone marketplace so maybe something small like that could convert a couple of uh, users that they're just like hey that's interesting enough to me uh the other thing i can say about the original version the xperia one was uh um the the performance the spec sheet the list it was a, it was an interesting combination it wasn't going to be for everyone because of that aspect ratio uh, a bit bizarre, you load up a video and you've, you've got these giant black bars on each side. I'm talking about a typical video, not a cinematic video. But then on the flip side, when it came to content creation, when you would boot into the, uh, the video camera app and you got all these like professional tools that were pulled from Sony Cinema and now you're shooting in this cinematic aspect ratio, then on that side, it started to pay back a little bit. It's a, it's, it's just a different experience. You have this narrow view of the web because of how narrow the device is. I really think the benefit here is one-handed functionality. And I do think as far as most modern media that people engage with, it's a bit of a drawback because there's just not that much content that can take advantage of this super wide aspect ratio. And when you end up, when you, when you for example, on a YouTube app, when you end up cropping in, it's so wide that you're going to be chopping something off and you can't really watch like that. So any, anyhow, they're doing another version. I'll have to get my hands on it, see what I think about it, and, and possibly even hook up a PlayStation controller and see how that goes. Sticking with Sony for a second, Sony is doing a relaunch. Uh, not, not really a relaunch, but they're doing a, a, a product heavy on the nostalgia. They're, they're going to release a remake of the Walkman to celebrate the 40th anniversary. Did you have a Walkman, Jack? I did. You got a Walkman. Oh yeah. A couple tapes, a couple cassettes. Mm -hmm. you put, do you remember any of those cassettes? Yeah, a uh, big one was uh, the Tragically Hip. Yeah, the Tragically Hip. Fully completely. Was that a clear cassette? I'm trying to remember what that cassette looked like. No, that one had uh, like a lot, like a crazy artwork uh, on the front, like a really colorful. Um, oh, yeah. that's cool. You didn't see that too often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, cassette tapes, rewind, uh, mixtapes yeah. that you could make. You would record the radio. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, kids don't know about this. It's the 40th It's the 40th anniversary if you want to feel old, Jack. It's the 40th anniversary. I have a thing for the Walkman brand just because I feel like it was a key development in the eventuality of the smartphone. It was the idea that at scale, you were going to have a device in everybody's pocket, a device that could go in your pocket in the first place because electronics and gadgets and computers up until a point were large. They were meant to be on desks or in rooms. The idea of personal gadgets 
there weren't that many of them. This was one of the few, which then turned into the iPod eventually, which then turned into, obviously, the iPhone and all the smartphones that we have access to. Now, this product they're that they're launching, it's not a relaunch. It's not an actual Walkman. They're not crazy. Instead, it's a thing that looks like a Walkman, but in reality is an Android device. It has a funky product name like Sony is famous for, NW-A100TPS. And what this thing's going to be is a 16 gigabyte Android powered music player. And it's going to be capable of having Android apps installed on it. It does not have a screen as big as a smartphone, 3.6 inch touchscreen, but it has some cool features apparently, according to Gizmodo. Uh, they say the device has a screensaver that looks like an old school uh, cassette player, except the color changes depending on what type of music file is playing. So heavy nostalgia when you see the thing playing. So when you throw up that screensaver and snap the case, the case closed, it'll make you feel just like you're back in the 80s. You see that, Will? Or maybe they say, maybe like you're in an episode of Stranger Things. The weird thing about this, I mean, it's obvious it's just strictly nostalgia at play. It's a gimmick. It's a fun item to have. It's not going to replace anyone's smartphone. Who's even using a, a dedicated music player? Although there is something to be said, uh, plenty of these music players t turn out to have better amplifiers for your headphones. There's more emphasis on the audio performance and so forth, the, the types of files that they're capable of, of playing. So some people are really into the idea of a dedicated music player, usually a person who's a type of enthusiast. But this thing is apparently going to retail between four and $500. So beyond the cost of many full smartphones just so you have the tape spinning while you're listening to music the 40th anniversary and so forth uh it's not gonna be for everyone it's a collector's item maybe do you have a guess here jack how many uh how many of the walkmans were sold in its in in the lifetime existence of the walkman you want to take a guess how many walkmans were sold oh minutes. 50 million? Oh, that's not a terrible guess. 200 million. Mm. Yeah, it's not a terrible guess, though, Jack. I thought you'd do worse. Mm. You were part way there. So, but 200 million in the, in the, in the land of smartphones, it's not, it's not even a dent. 200 million. Mm. Everybody has to have a smartphone. If you had a Walkman, you were like kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It was kind of unusual at one point in time. But the smartphone, I mean, how do you not have one? in today's day and age. And speaking of smartphones, in fact, and speaking of millions, and better yet, hundreds of millions, Xiaomi has shipped 100 million smartphones in India. They hit the 100 million mark. And they haven't even been doing it for that long. So we're talking about the Walkman starting in 1979, having its 40th anniversary, and they moved 200 million units. Xiaomi in five years in India alone has moved 100 million units to give you an idea of the scale difference and just the importance and significance of smartphones, the smartphone marketplace, and so forth. Now, the, the history here, I've talked about this in the past. Xiaomi has been crazy aggressive in India, launching brick-and-mortar stores, starting online, and then moving into brick-and-mortar stores. And their aggressiveness mostly comes down to uh, these tr them trimming their margins to the bare minimum necessary to break into this marketplace, dominate, and then hold on to their position. Most of the, the devices they sell have a price tag below $200, but the company says it never makes more than 5% profit on any hardware it sells. That's not a lot of profit. It, but on $100 million, I mean, it's a few dollars, yeah. no doubt. But, but uh, Apple would have a good laugh at that profit margin. Mm -hmm. Apple would be like, ha, what you guys doing? kind of business you five percent margin you know apple didn't mess around with that well we'll see who's laughing in like who's laughing last in 20 years yeah it's aggressive move and the competition is obviously heating up and i've made the argument in the past that all these users let's say this hundred million that purchased the xiaomi device a lot of those are going to be people's first and second smartphones they ever own in india they're getting locked into android they're getting all their apps they're happy and are they going to want to transition 
to Apple at a later date? Is that the aspirational product or are they connected enough and happy enough at the lower price tag or just within the Android ecosystem in general? And will it be too late for Apple in that market specifically? It's possible. A uh, couple of other specs here on this particular on this particular article. Shipping 100 million smartphones in India is obviously a remarkable feat. To, to kind of uh, to act as a reference, last year the company shipped 100 million handsets in the year worldwide. So to, to, to sort of imagine the significance of the Indian market, in the five years since they've been in India, they moved 100 million smartphones just within that country. And over the course of a single year globally, this is a Chinese company. They move plenty of products in China as well. In an entire year globally, they met the same 100 million number. Like, Jack, you know, how, you know, you know what the population of the United States is? 380 million. Somewhere around there. I hear people say 350. Some people say closer to 400. It's somewhere in there. That's 100 million smartphones. If this number took place in the U.S., that's one in three people got a Xiaomi phone in one year. It's a crazy thought when you start going down that path. Now, we all understand there's over a billion people in India. I've said it before on this show. And I, and I had a hard time with Willie Do getting him to understand. So I'm hoping it's easier with you. No, I don't understand. You, you don't understand a billion. You it's can't hard, picture it. It's hard to wrap your head yeah, around. Yeah, you don't, you don't. You never saw something like that. And you didn't come on that trip to India. And I have to be honest with you. When I, I was doing a meetup, a meet and greet, and people were showing me their phones. We were talking about the phones they were using. And I saw so many Xiaomi devices. It was crazy. It was by far the number one that I saw. Uh, Xiaomi recently passed Samsung in that market. So this aggressive mindset has worked out really well for them. And it's shaping up to be quite the battle taking place out there for these customers this growing customer base and one of the few smartphone markets in the world that's still growing still healthy and hasn't cooled off a little bit so xiaomi putting a lot of attention in india and congrats to them they hit the 100 million smartphone number now getting back to apple apple happy happy with the north american customers the western customers satisfied they are uh preparing to reopen Maybe their fanciest or most iconic of all their stores, the Fifth Avenue store in New York. Did you and I visit this store, Jack? Were you there with me? Did we go visit this store or was that a different, a different time in New York? Uh, have you ever been to this store before? I, I must It's have. the glass cube and the entire store is down in the, in the basement. It's underground, the store. But the entryway is a giant glass cube. You know what? I've seen many pictures of this. I haven't actually. You haven't been. actually been. Okay. Well, I've been there a few times. Very bizarre store. Uh, it's it's definitely cool, but it's obviously underground. And for an iconic brand like Apple, I mean, they can afford to be anywhere. They actually caught a deal on this real estate on this lease because it was underground. Hmm. And then it turns into they take uh, something that would typically be perceived as negative. And they put a giant glass cube on top of the entrance, and boom, an, an icon is born. It's kind of cool. Is this what it looks like here? So that's what it looks like right now, and, and that's the reason it's back in the news. It's been shut down for since 2017 for renovations. Now, I don't know. What renovations are you doing since 2017 in your location, which is maybe the most high profile in the world, it's kind of bizarre to me. I don't know what they're doing down there. But there's a couple reasons why this store is special. One of which is once it does reopen, and previously when it was open, this was a 24-hour store. City that never sleeps. Imagine that, a 24-hour Apple store. Head there at any time. What you need, a cable? You need a dongle? 24-hour dongle. You can't wait until... No, you can't. No, you can't wait, Jack. You know how that is. Trying to connect to something. You got to edit. You're trying to finish. You need a dongle. You can't. It's 3 a.m. You're going. Anyway, I don't know. It's more of a move. I think it's an homage. There's a note that they put on the on the window. So any, anyhow, it's been closed since 2017, but they're getting prepared to reopen it. And it's emerged again recently, but with colorful glass instead of clear glass. Now, people are saying that there's been a film crew around the cube 
And my guess is with Apple's event coming up very shortly, that they're going to do, there's going to be some sort of special magical unveiling. They're going to say something about this store and get set to reopen it completely to the public very shortly. I have no idea why it's in all the, it's in this color pattern. It, does it have something to do with the upcoming iPhones? Are they going to be available in these colors? I'm not really sure, but apparently documentary crew has been filming all kinds of stuff around this area. Uh, anyhow, it's, it's set to reopen at some point soon, and the colors are supposedly temporary. So it's going to go back to the clear glass at some point and go back to the 24 hours open. There's a note on the glass, which is kind of interesting. What does it say here? Ben beneath, oh, right here, Apple Fifth Avenue, always open to open minds. Beneath the surface of Fifth Avenue, you'll soon discover a reimagined space where creativity is always welcome. A 24-hour store with doors open to the bright lights and big ideas of this city. Ready to inspire what you can do, discover, and make next. It'll cost you $1,200. Yeah, it'll cost you. You want any of that that's listed in that paragraph, you better bring your credit card because we ain't giving that away for free, you understand? No. You want to enter this glass cube you better bring your wallet with you You better bring your a game and uh maybe look if you're going to be creative the way they're implying you might have to get one of those new mac pros when you get down there into the store mm -hmm. and and you read the thing up top you get you walk down the steps and you're like that mac pro is going to be what 20 grand i need it yeah i'll china you know i'm in this i'm in this big city with big ideas and bright lights how do i participate $20,000. Yeah, I'm going to go into debt. I'm going to get that Apple card, and I'm going to get myself this Mac Pro, and I'm going to belong in this big city with big ideas because mm -hmm. I got my own big ideas. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And, and sleep in uh, Central Park. Yeah, it's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Anyhow, very cool. They're going to reopen it. Uh, I'm excited to see what the whole point of it was. I, I'm, I'm curious. What's with the colors, and why was it closed for so long? All right, last one for me. This is a cool video. I don't know if you caught it or not, Jack. Man catches stranger's phone on roller coaster and becomes instant legend. It's such a such a internet headline. Mm -hmm. And becomes instant legend. It's like, you don't know this guy. This guy could be a jerk. Is it, he's a legend to who? To what? People love throwing that kind of thing around. Anyhow, uh, it's it, maybe it's fine in this case. He's definitely done something incredible and and in, in the moment and reactionary you know what just play the clip play the clip for a second here give people a taste of how this works yeah you can kill the music though so it's a roller coaster it's it's traveling up slowly i believe where is this roller coaster the guy's from new zealand he was at port aventura world theme park i don't believe that's in new zealand it was in spain spain yeah so he's traveling He's flying. This video is capturing his experience. Boom! You see how that? You see what that was there, Jack? Did you catch that moment? He, he saw it coming for a bit. You could see. He it. saw it coming. He's he got his eyes he on it. he's like he sees it over there. Like right oh, there. bang! And his girlfriend or the girl beside him did not spot it at all, or she just wasn't interested in dealing with it. Yeah. Now, the thing is, if he doesn't catch the phone, does it smack the guy behind him? Maybe. Maybe. It's quite possible, because the guy behind him wants to celebrate after, by the way. You can see he looks right at him. That's his yeah. buddy back there. He's like, look what I just I saved your life. Uh, that's tough to do in real time. You're traveling down the crazy roller coaster. It's definitely tough to do. <laughs> he's, he's, he's now waving it around. What if it fell out of his hand now? Yeah, that wouldn't be. And then his buddy behind catches. What do you think, Jack? Does he deserve the headline? Would you consider this man a legend because of this act? No. That's the no. Okay, it's not. It's not a legend. Not quite legend status. You won't. Uh, you mean a week from now, you won't be thinking of this man, the legend? There'll be no statue. No. <laughs> it's it very is. short lived. Yeah. I internet legend. Leg being legendary on the internet, it lasts for what would you say about? 30 seconds yeah. at best, and then you're on to the next thing. So he's a legend for the 30 seconds that we're on this right now. Apparently, uh, he returned the phone to the owner, and the owner gave him a big hug, as you would. What else can you do? Is a handshake? A handshake doesn't suffice, Jack. Let me tell you, if this happens to you, prepare your hug. Prepare your awkward man-to-man -man hug. Mm -hmm. 
because that's what's required once there, uh, once financial. legend status is achieved. It's hug territory. Wait, I would imagine there'd be a financial reward, maybe. Like, how right? did he just save you there? He saved you all right. But what what kind of a, what do you give him twenty bucks? Yeah, what? You give him twenty bucks. You give him twenty bucks. You you buy him a drink or or uh, you know you pay for his lunch, mm -hmm. which that I mean I don't know you know if you've been to a theme park lately, Jack, you ain't getting far with twenty bucks. Let no. me tell you, no, you can't even get a bottle of water for twenty bucks. I'll right get you a soda, maybe. All right. Well, anyway, that's it for me. Uh, I got to get out of here. You didn't have anything you want to talk about, did you? You got you should say a few words. I, I got. Yeah, but you should just say something to the people. They don't see you that often, so. Oh, Lord. Lou, don't do this to me, man. I don't know what to talk about. No, no, just say something to the people. They've been fans for a long time. You know, they're fans of yours. You know, just, you're in the chair today, and I realize you just don't have this opportunity very often. I can't wait for Will <laughs> to come back. All right. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate it. Maybe next time. Thanks yeah. for joining us. We'll catch you real soon.